It was a delightful place to go and to dance to. That was our Friday night fun. It was always good, always. My priest used to say, over the hill and to the mill. <laughs> the first time I walked into Mill Lady Mill, I thought, this is a gorgeous place. Nothing I've ever seen like it before. It was a huge dance hall. The biggest place I've ever seen. They had a beautiful light in the center that turns colors, and uh, the stage was set up so pretty. The colors were beautiful. It was a wonderful ballroom. They had a good variety of music. I saw Jerry Lee Lewis, Frankie Avalon, Jimmy Clanton, the Beach Boys, uh, Jimmy Gilmore and the Fireballs. They did have orchestras in too. It wasn't just regular bands. They would have the orchestras come in while Lawrence Welk was here. I enjoyed the nights when they had those big orchestras like, like Sammy Kay and Lawrence Welk. Saturday or Friday night, they had like the big band sound. And Guy Lombardo was there one night and, and it only costed five dollars for my boyfriend and I. Teen night was always on Sunday. That was when they played rock and roll. I can remember with Johnny Cash, uh, oh, I saw Brenda Lee make her first appearance. But when she first came, their mother was the promoter, and they stood her on a flat top piano. Because she was only, uh, I mean, couldn't have been more than five, six years, seven years old. And she had a voice dinner ready. When she came to play out the mill, she started playing, and then all of a sudden, all the people were hollering, and they all said she was so short, you can't see her. They couldn't see her. She's only got four foot something, I think. They went back and got four or five pop cases, and they'd set them up on a, made a stand for it. She'd get up on that little homemade stage and sing. The bottom one is uh, my plaque from the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Jim Sovel. The band called The Shades. Playing out at the Melody Mill and played there several times through the years. Oh, we played all the Ventures music, all the Fireballs music, and of course the girls would stand on there and just scream and hoot and holler. And I'd always sort of chuckle at them and would wave at them. They liked us so we got a lot of work. The Melody Mill was the best. Janet and I met just before they closed the place. It was 1964, I came home, day before my birthday, and then the next day was my birthday, so I went out to the mill. Well, all of a sudden this guy came to our table and he started talking to a guy that I had known, and they kept looking at me. And I, hmm, what's this all about? I uh, asked who the girl was down at the end of the table, so I asked her to square dance. We came from the, the square dancing, of course you're hot because you go to four or five dances. I asked her if she wanted a drink. Yeah, what do you want? Well, she's going to be a big time. Give me a Coke High. All right. I had no idea what in the world a Coke High is. So I bring it back and that's the first time she tasted liquor. I sipped it and I, oh, this is horrible. Ugh. <laughs> and that was 52 years ago, 53 years ago. And we've been married 50 years last July. That was probably the most memorable night. It had to be. It was the most lasting. Buddy Holly's plane crash happened in uh, 1959. He, he was uh, booked for the Melody Mill, like in a couple of weeks. And that night they played up at Clear Lake. The bands got on the bus, they talked it over and decided to take a plane. And he should not have left in that snowstorm, but he did. Then they advertised they needed help, tragically, and they got uh, Jimmy Clanton, Frankie Avalon, Buddy Holly's band played. But there was a bunch of them coming to take their place that time.
nowadays, we don't have some of the ballroom dancing. Just when I heard it was closing up, I, I just was shocked. And that was a sad night because that was our main entertainment. I wish now, you know, knowing what the mill was like, that I had got to go there more than what I ever did. I mean, yeah, they just went overboard to have top-notch entertainment all the time. And it was always good, always. It's like, darn, it is too sad that all of a sudden it was just closed. Because I'm sure that our own children would have liked going to the Melody Mill. If a building like that was here to get today, it would be hopping. I really wish that the mill was still here, that we could be going to those dances nowadays. And a lot of the other big ballrooms aren't close around either anymore. So it is a sad situation to think that it had to leave town. Dennis Trannell, who was a bass player in the band, was dying of cancer. And he said to me, he called me Jimbo all the time. He said, Jimbo, before I die, he said, we should really try to get the Mill to Mill in there, Hall of Fame. And I said, yeah. I said, I can contact Jimmy Gilmore and the Fireballs and got a letter from each of them, Brenda and uh, the Beach Boys. So I got the three letters, got a call from the head honcho now up there at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and she says, you're in. And I said, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. 